Hi and welcome to episode 88 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family and I'm a photographer too. So fab to be back with the podcast again. After some time off over the summer, it feels great to be back in front of the microphone and talking to inspiring photographers from all over the world. I hope you'll enjoy listening again. It's a real pleasure today to be speaking to the fab Dave Thompson. Based in the UK, Dave has 20 years experience as a press and sports photographer covering events all over the world and we talk about that as well as his wedding work on the episode today, amongst many other things including photographing the royal wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, the story behind one of his specific reportage awards, our Netflix synopsis game, why people skills are so important, Jennifer Aniston and Tiffany, photographing Tyson Fury, Champions League football, the Olympics and much more too. Before we get on to Dave, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, Firstly, I hope you've been able to be shooting a lot more this year, this summer, than you did last year, whether that's weddings or families or whatever it is you photograph. I hope you've been able to do it more. I hope if you've, you know, as a lot of my colleagues, you know, shooting so much this season that you've been able to survive the the onslaught of editing. Um, I I hope you're okay. Um, And also just big major news and an exciting thing is that we are having the TIR uh, Christmas party this year. And it's going to be the first year that we are going to be able to have this Reptage family members along as well. Because obviously this Reptage family started midway through last year and uh, we all know why we couldn't have the party last December. So yeah, it's really exciting. The party is going to be for TIR and TIRF members and members can bring a guest along too if they want it's happening on monday 6th of december this year in london we've already got over 90 people uh, confirmed with photographers coming over from like france belgium germany ireland portugal spain and netherlands so yeah it's going to be great and i'm just um, really happy that that can go ahead this year and i'm looking forward to to meeting you all and partying with you all on the night um reportage and reportage family members if you want to come along you just need to rsvp and it's totally free and as i said before you can you can bring a guest and the first lot of people who come get a free drink too a little bonus that's quite cool i think um and yeah if you're not a member yeah you know it's just one of the benefits of members membership i think it's so important that we have these physical meetups and it's not just an online thing you know it's just so different to meet people face to face um so yeah if, if if you want to join then uh, you can do that and then come along to the party. But anyway, yes, hope to see as many of you as possible in December. Uh, but until then, it's over to Dave. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Good morning, Alan. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, all good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how are you? How are you? I'm all right, actually. Yeah, I'm OK today. Today is a, today is a good day. Someone said that in the last 12 months, didn't they? So, yeah, all well up here. How's, how's the beautiful Cornwall? It is actually, it is sunny today. So I'm looking out my garden and there is sunshine, which is, uh, it's actually rare, you know, it's supposed to be sunny all the time, isn't it? But it's not down here. It's not. Um, well, but how... I've only ever been once, we well, twice to the same place. We went to stay in St. Austell. Is that how you say it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Cool. Did, uh, uh, what, did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. mate. Loved it. Loved it. But we, we, the weather was, the two years that we went back to back, the weather wasn't that great, but it's still Sorry. nice though isn't it no it's still nice it's just it was actually nicer later in the day bizarrely like the oh, evenings right. were always really nice the two is that because you like had a few drinks in the daytime so sure. <laughs> no i think yeah we'd probably got the kids to bed probably something like that wasn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, a nice, that's a nice thing that's funny because uh, you're up north are you in are you in stockport i am yeah which is about six seven miles south of manchester for those that don't know the bearings but yeah it's uh it's all right it's not a bad part of the world to live as i say it does rain a lot but so <laughs> <Is> it <what? laughs> it's it not it's, it's beautifully gray okay <laughs> yeah that, that's, i used to live i used to live in south manchester for a few years so not far from where else was that uh in west didsbury Oh, I see, that's a little bit swisher than where i am <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's nice we lived on, yeah, Clyde Road, which was near, oh, oh, man, the Lime Tree restaurant and stuff. I don't know, in Metropolitan Pub and stuff. I don't know if you know it. I know the Met. That's on the corner, isn't it? It used to be a oh, big yeah. student bar way back when. I don't know if it still is. Mm. That's right. So we lived on that road right by, actually. But it was quite nice. Although one um, one time in the streets, uh, someone was put a pour of petrol over them and uh, set on fire on our road. So not that nice. Oh, nice. Finally. <laughs> I know. Maybe yeah. 
Maybe maybe less Swiss than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Man. <laughs> I thought there wasn't. I think some scenes of like Cold Feet was filmed in West Tidsbury, weren't they? I don't know. Do you remember Cold Probably. Feet? Probably. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I am. I'm old enough to remember that. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there was that. There was a lot of it's, a lot of those kind of houses are over that way, aren't they? The nice big, the Victorian or Edwardian, I'm not sure, but okay, pine yeah. floors. They were a big thing in Cold Feet, weren't they? Everyone oh, had pine yes. floors after Cold Feet came. Out. <laughs> I love that. You know, I was a big fan when that came out. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of picked it up and put it down. Really, um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's me. I'm a bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. We're going to find out loads more about you in this episode. Um, and Dave, how has it been? It's funny because, you know, it's been a break from the podcast. Uh, it's great to be recording some new episodes again. I used to, for the last year, I've been talking about how we've been, people have been coping with the pandemic, but now I can change the task. You know, what's it been like shooting again? How's, how's your season been this year? It's been ace, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky. I know quite a few uh, photographers up here who uh, it's about a 50 50 split i know because the, my work is a mixture of weddings and kind of editorial sport work if you like cool. um but i know lots of i have lots of friends who have done loads of weddings and bless them they're all like pretty much on their knees um you know because they've had to cram so much in from kind of like july onwards yeah. Um, I count myself very lucky that all the ones that I had for 2020 that I moved to 21, um, I've been able to fit in. It's kind of like for two months I've had one a week, oh, which is which is, bad, is which is manageable. Exactly, exactly. So it's been okay for me, but I do have a lot of sympathy for probably people like yourself that have just been absolutely stacked out. But but. From my point of view, I am busy again, which is great because mm-hmm. as for everyone, uh, everyone's been the same, haven't they? The last twelve months has been what the hell's going well, on? What the hell? Are what we was do? it like for you? So, were you able? Were you able to do you know your press, your news, and sport? I guess well, my sports events weren't so on as well, were they? No, Jim? exactly. I mean, I had a plan in. I had a plan in twenty eighteen, late twenty eighteen, to do. Um, less sport and more weddings because I have a, two very good friends, uh, Stacey Oliver and Claire Jennings, and they both have been doing weddings for the last maybe five years, something like that. But they've been photographers like me their whole working lives. Okay. Um, so I went along and spoke to them, and they were both just like, well, do you want to do more? Just go and do it. So my plan was to do less sport and more weddings, um, and it was a five-year plan from the end of sort of 2018. So I began marketing myself more, went on, you know, workshops and things like that. Um, and then obviously COVID came along mm. and put a stop to me and to everybody else. Mm. Um, but it also, obviously it stopped weddings, but it stopped sports. It stopped any form of news, which I do less of now, to be honest. Right. Um, it stopped PR work. Um, and it made me actually realise that my plan to just go and do weddings perhaps wasn't the best thing I've ever thought of. Mm, that because diversification, I, it seems to be yeah, so important. And, yeah, and I did, uh, years ago when I left the Press Association, I did I started doing shifts for the Associated Press, um, and I was guaranteed an amount of shifts a month, and I so I didn't do anything else. And then all of right. a sudden, those shifts were halved, and I thought, Back then, I thought, I'll never put all my eggs in one basket again. So Mm. COVID, strangely, it didn't do me a favour, but it did make me realise that I was going back down the all my eggs in one basket route. Mm. Um, So it's made me reassess, re-evaluate, whatever, um, the things I was thinking of. Um, But yeah, Mm. as for me, for everyone, it's been challenging in in many different ways. And, And I would say June last year was probably the worst that was the worst time um, yeah. because because there was no because i'm because i'm set a, a set a limited company oh man i, I, no I thought well I, i'm lucky i am but again I, I count myself lucky in so many ways that whether rightly or wrongly the accountant obviously didn't know there was going to be a pandemic mm-hmm. so i was lucky i was able to claim furlough because she had me on a paye scheme where ah, friends okay. of mine friends of mine who were limited but just took dividends have had mm-hmm. nothing because 
they're also not classed as self-employed because they are employed by themselves. There's a difference. Uh, okay, and it right. was all just horrible. For, for mid-June, there was a two-week period in the middle of June, which was, as I think, as low as, personally, as low as I've ever felt in my life. Um, but you somehow, you know, things suddenly just start to steer a little bit. And I don't know. I don't know how, how, how you get through it. There is no. No, no answer to it, but without no. bringing your your podcast down too low, I'm not the only one, am I? So that's oh, no. the way you kind of have to look at it all. It's so true, yeah, man. And, and personally, me as well. I had like my lowest period, like the the worst in my life. It, it might have been around that time. I can't remember, but I'd never felt anything like it. Um, yeah. So yeah, totally totally get it um oh but it's so good that we you know things are looking <laughs> up and i know people listen to this though, all around the world and obviously some places around the world are not as open as as the uk are so obviously we don't know everyone's circumstances but you know it has been so good to be shooting um shooting this year have you got money left this year now i've got one on saturday um i think off the top of my head i think it's another i think i've another four left um, okay that's want, not too I'd, bad either no, exactly, and and as I say, because because it was kind of still a little acorn, um, I kind of had to move maybe ten from last year, right? Okay, and because because there weren't twenty already in the diary, it was manageable to move. So yeah, I think this year by the end of it, I'll have perhaps done maybe nearly twenty weddings, which is as many as I've ever done in a year. Right? Okay, but cool. it's kind of been nicely spread out. It's not been flooded. Like, yeah, you hear like guys. stories of some people doing like 10 weddings in 14 days or something. It's like, what? Oh, How are people doing that? I, I, do. I just, I, I, have, I have huge admiration for, for everyone in the wedding industry that's having to, through no fault of their own, having to cram it all in and, and keep on top of it. It's, oh, it's, it's hard because I've got friends that are posting things and saying things and, and you want to give them encouragement, but then you also don't want to sound condescending when you do it. That's um, true. So I do. I have. I have a great deal, as I say, a great deal of admiration for the people who are plowing through it, and hopefully yeah. there's some light for them. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, and and stuff like yeah. I think you're going to the. Are you going to nine? You're going to nine dots gathering, aren't you? In November? I am. It's, it's it's my debut. My nine. Oh, cool! Debut. Your first. One. Awesome. <laughs> It'll be my. I've been to every one, so I'm really looking forward to. It. I'll be able to meet you properly in the flesh. There, yeah, no, that would be cool. Well, this is the other thing. There's a few. I mean, um, I think. Uh, Phil Skull, uh, Phil Skulls. Phil <laughs> Skulls. Uh, Phil Skulls <laughs> and Dave Skulls. <laughs> there you go. You know That's the ultimate photographer. <laughs> <laughs> well, those two guys were, were kind enough to say to you, um, why don't you speak to Dave for the podcast? And oh, I'd spoken did. to yeah. Phil. I'd spoken to Phil about um, Nine Dots, and he was like, mate, just just go and have a look at it because he loved it. And uh, I don't think Skulls is going this year, is he? But it'll be great to see. There are so many faces that I think are going that I've never met. So it, it's it's going to be a good good thing for oh, that. So hopefully it. we we can we can share a beer or two. Well, definitely, definitely. Although side my cider for me, I don't like beer. You know, I don't like oh, beer. I drink anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the taste of beer. It's so weird, isn't it? But I love cider. So yeah, mine's cider. And we can play table tennis. Do you like table tennis? I'm absolute garbage. Oh, good. Tennis. We should play then. We should play. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, could be the we, we we might make the highlights like the last three seconds compared to the rest who look very good. <laughs> oh i love yeah. it man no it's gonna be it's gonna be great meeting you there it's gonna be great meeting you um so yeah dave i want to go one 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 quote from your tir profile which i thought was fun and i wanted to ask you about um yeah you said in 2019 i began doing more wedding photography which i never thought i would if you had asked me in 1997 no so yeah tell us more about that because obviously you do come from that <laughs> photographer background was that you did you not envisage shooting weddings back then oh then? man it, I, I used to my first i think one of the first Weddings I shot. So briefly to try and condense my working life, um, I left college in '97, and I'd been working with a press agency in Stoke because I used to live near uh, near Stoke at the time. So went back with them and got a job, and I spent two years with them. And my boss at the time, it was my weekend on, and he said, "You need to photograph my mate's wedding. There's no news. There's no football." you photographing this guy's wedding. And he gave me 10 rolls of film, 36 exposure film to cover the whole day. Um, and I did it. And it was the first time, my, my overriding memory is it was the first time I came across vodka Red Bull. 
<laughs> because everyone was drinking it in these huge pitchers in the middle of a field. And it just oh, smelled no. beautiful. Um, I do I like thought, wow, that, Yeah, same here. We all have a go at that as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that was my first overriding memory of my first wedding i don't know what the pictures were like i don't know where they are it's are they not on your profile now not on your portfolio <laughs> <no>? <laughs> do you know what i reckon if i went back if i if they've still got the negatives i'd find them but i'm not in a rush to do that <laughs> um and then I, did, I moved up to i had a conversation with my dad in late 99 about moving back to stockport to work as a freelance and he'd said to me a couple of months before why don't you do why don't you photograph weddings you'd be retired by the time you're 50 <laughs> and i was like because they're awful, Dad. They're just not the kind of photography I'm, I want to do. Um, and they just weren't, because Caroline and I got married in 2002, and our pictures were that just traditional wedding photography, I suppose you would call it. Sure. Um, where you, loads you of group paid... photos and staged stuff. Yeah, we had... We had the first time you saw the photographer was when Caroline arrived at the church with her dad. Right. He wasn't allowed to photograph the ceremony. Wow, really? Um, yeah, because it, we, we had to pay the church a £300 copyright release, <laughs> which, we, which we said we were not doing. So we weren't allowed <laughs> any pictures during it. the ceremony. <laughs> oh. uh, even as a photographer, I wasn't paying that. So yeah. we didn't have any pictures during the ceremony. We had a couple of pictures inside the church after, group shots outside, drove to the venue, pretend cake cutting, photographer went home. So it was massively posed, staged, rigid, traditional wedding photography, leaning against that tree, looking into each other's eyes. It was all medium format stuff, nice, uh, okay. lovely negatives and everything. Um, but just dull, just dull. And it, you know, when I was, what would I have been, early 20s, I wanted to go and photograph Premier League football. I wanted to yeah. photograph big news events. Um, weddings were just not on my radar. I can um, see how that would put you off. <laughs> yeah, well, it, well, yeah, and and so it wasn't until, as I say, a few years ago when I started to think about, you know, the next few years, if you like, and kind of stumbled across um, how much wedding photography had changed. The mm. guy, I don't know if you know Paul, Paul Rogers, it used to be on the Times. Oh yeah, yeah, I spoke um, to him. Yeah, so I became aware of, of of what he was doing, and I was like, I should really like that now. And again, spoke to Claire and Stacey and um, and then started to look a lot across the, the broader spectrum of everybody else. And I was thinking, this isn't like 2002. <laughs> mm, it has so moved it's on, hasn't it? Yeah. Massively, massively. Um, so it was a little bit more, you know, people ask me about my style, which is a question that I just don't like answering. Um, Ooh, what's your style, I, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, uh, winging it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably I get that. I years, feel like that. Thirty years of winging it, but no, I, 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 I always go back to editorial. I always go back to saying editorial. But like we we said briefly before we came online, that I love people, and I think that's why photography has always been um, something I've enjoyed doing because I like people. I like being around people. I like I like the challenges people give you. People can. People can be bloody awkward. Let's be honest, <laughs> but that's that's the challenge. That is to to get them to get the awkward people on side is sometimes the best achievement you get because they realise what you're trying to do just through speaking to them. Um, and also, you go to weddings and people want you to be there as a photographer. You know, you go and you're outside court photographing someone who's got to go and stand in front of the judge. The photographer is the last person they want to see. But oh, yeah, that must be a different reception. Oh, <laughs> massively. Yeah, it's, it's, people tend to swear at you a lot less at weddings. <laughs> and I've not had anyone, so far, I've not had anyone spit at me or anything that, like that. So, oh, did yeah, that happen to nicer anyone work. News? Oh, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think there's a press photographer who's never had something like that. But, yeah. and you can, when, you, when you're a bit younger and you care a bit less, you can kind of, just live through that as disgusting as it is you just think well you know that's the job that i've got to do and i've got the picture of him and i'll send it to the picture desk and on to the next one um okay. but it is pretty grim at times but it's also, it, it also never grim. had any no one spat at you at a wedding yet then not yet no no and i've not been near any llamas either so they wouldn't count oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I i have been near a llama at a wedding actually <laughs> did you get spat at no, I was far enough away that I didn't. <laughs> <get>. <laughs> I 
They can spit pretty far, though. You yeah, got to be wary of them. <laughs> <laughs> so when you like made this decision to start going into weddings, then what was what was like your first wedding? Well, how did that go? Like, you know, when in a couple of years ago, was it a couple of years ago? Then when you really got back into so, it? So yeah, the first the first wedding that I did, and I I always count it as the first wedding for someone who I never knew. That's what I counted as my real as my first wedding, really. Because yeah. I'd always, like I say, doing the press days, I'd done them for friends and family. And then I'd literally run a mile after I'd handed the images over because it was still, I don't know, do you know, when I look back at it, it was still quite kind of, there were group shots, but I'd, I'd kind of shot it in an editorial way anyway, before I even know that there'd really been this big change in wedding photography, because that was the photography I was doing. Right, sure. Um, you know, as a press photographer, you're there to tell the story of whatever's happening at a wedding i mean i look back at it and i still think it's pretty dire <laughs> if i'm honest if i'm <laughs> sure truly honest in myself um don't we, we was, always it, think our works die though don't we don't yeah we always i think, think so yeah, yeah i think and, and even even weddings that you look back on after six months of shooting you think oh did i deliver that picture did yeah. i really deliver that picture um but I, that's a good thing in a way. I think if you're constantly looking at it going, oh, look at me, aren't that's I good? True. Then mm. you start sounding like a twat. That's you're so true. On, Do you think there are people on. out there who are like that? I don't know. I must guess there must be some oh, people. Well, let's let's hope not. Let's <laughs> hope not. But, but but that maybe there are. I just don't know. Okay. I think you can I think you can put a pro, almost like a graph, like the louder people are, like on social media or just or in general, like the less kind of good their photography generally is. I don't you find that the people who shout about themselves the most. I find it very personally. I know you have to do things on Instagram now, and I know you have to have a social media presence. Well, oh, do yeah. you? There's, there's another question. Uh, um, guess, yeah. Do you well, have to? We feel, all right, we feel. We I'm supposed to be asking the questions, man. I'm supposed <laughs> to be asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did, I'm sure, you know, empty vessels and all that. I just, I just find that whenever I speak to couples who are uh, interested in booking me, um, I kind of say to them that this is the, you contacting me is, is the start of the process. And then we can arrange a meeting, either face-to-face -face or on Zoom, and then you can go away and you can do whatever you like. There is no, for that one, that one-hour meeting on Zoom or whatever it is, plus the back and forth beforehand of questions and sending brochures and whatever that I could spend three hours on and off talking to a couple who may not book, mm. but I don't have a problem with that. There's, there's no obligate. I hate being sold to. We all hate being sold. Yeah. When you don't look at a bed or a computer or whatever. There's someone who starts selling to you just immediately gets knocked off the list. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm sure I'm not the only photographer that feels like that or says that, but it, it's important to me that, I mean, I mean, I love wedding fairs. I love oh, cool. wedding fairs. What going as a, as a business or just going along as a as a pretend yeah, group as, as a weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I love I love going yeah. along. It's, it's a ball like getting up early. It's a ball like wrestling with easels. They're like deck chairs. Okay. Putting an easel up and trying to get your pictures straight and things like. That. But mm. then when you actually start meeting people, I, I again it goes back to why probably I enjoyed photography as a teenager because. You get to meet people, oh, and you get to cool. chat to people, and you talk about what they've got planned. And God, you don't you don't hit it off with all of them, and you don't get every one of them. All of them don't book. Um, but See, a lot of people, people would be people really, a lot of people would be really nervous about doing you know wedding fairs like that though. Um, so it's great that that do you get nervous? No, you don't. You sound like you don't. Like, sorry, I can't even talk. Like, you, you sound like you don't get nervous to talk to me. Like, we've never spoken before ever. You don't seem nervous. You're very easy to talk to. So I guess that's that goes really well for, for the wedding fairs. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. Going back to what my dad said years ago about why don't you go and photograph weddings? He said, because, you know, you are good around people. You're mm -hmm. good. And this, is, this would have been when I was, what? I think it's probably before I moved. So it was probably more when I was at, my, on my first college course I would probably have been 17 18 and he, he even noticed then he said you are good around people um yes. if, if you had to ask me what my what is what I think is, is good about me as a person and it is that I, I, I am good around people I can talk mm. to people and, and 
long and that is so mind. important isn't it and what we do I it's think so, so important oh, it is. yeah i think but again it depends on on what you want to be do you i i like to document a wedding or photograph a wedding or call it what you will but i won't stand in the corner and try and be invisible you know, mm-hmm. if, if, yeah. if if all of a sudden there's a problem with a bouquet and it's in the, on the other side of the hotel and there's only one person that can get it and it's me, I'll go and get it. Yeah, that's because cool. it, 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 the, the bride. If, if I don't get a picture of the bride at that moment, well, is is it more important that she's happy that she knows she's got a bouquet? Well, yeah. Well, so yeah, it and maybe it didn't even happen if you weren't there anyway in that room. So. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not for me, <laughs> <didn't> exactly. <laughs> uh, what and what, what's on the subject of wedding fairs though? Do you because I'm sure loads of people are listening and be interested. And you said that they're pretty successful for you. Do you have any kind of general tips? To, you know that how to do a wedding fair well in terms of getting new business. <laughs> Oh God, that's I know, that's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> that's a tough one. That is a tough. Um, I don't because because I'm I, I just try and be me, really. Yeah, um, I, I show an interest in them, and then I kind of I, I, I'm never one to jump on people. I just kind of let them. If someone's walking past my table and stops, then that's when I'll try and engage with them. Right. If sure. they just keep walking, if they look and keep walking, I don't sort of go chase chase after them them. and say oh you looked at me come and talk to me i just yeah if they stop and they look as if they want to engage then i'll speak to them and and kind of you know it'll just let it naturally happen i don't kind of i have basically a couple of questions which i might ask at the beginning which is how are you getting on with your planning um and then from that it's like venues dates and even if they've not got anything i'll just sort of perhaps give them any little bits of advice i might be able to give them oh, every conversation cool. just goes unplanned if you like a bit like this <laughs> right, yeah which is the best way <laughs> yeah definitely well that's cool isn't it i guess that's just that's just you and they'll just kind of remember you as just being yourself and not putting the hard sell on that must put you in in, in good stead yeah i'd hope so like i say i don't know if that everyone else probably does it the same way i just don't know um wow well, there must like, be like, someone to do proper hardcore selling maybe so. maybe i think if you've just got to i think if my mum's listening again sorry mum but people <laughs> smell people smell bullshit i think a mile off that's um, true isn't it? and you just you know they're, they're, that doesn't work for anybody does it no, it's true. <laughs> and um, man, I, 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 something you said just earlier when you were talking about your own wedding and, and that you would have had to pay a three hundred pound like fee to the church. Where did you get married? Was it like Westminster <laughs> Abbey or something? <laughs> no, no, no. It was a, a, a lovely big old church in Stockport called St George's Church, um, which, as, as I've grown older, has become to mean an awful lot to me because it was adjacent to the street that Caroline and I had our first house on, where the kids grew mm. up. The kids went to the between our house and the church was the primary school, um, oh. and the two boys went there. They're now eighteen and sixteen, so they're bigger than me. All oh, right, <laughs> but they they went to the primary school, so we used to go back to the church for their like nativities and Easter things and everything else. Um, not that either of us or any of them are particularly religious. It was just part of the school life that, that they were at. Um, right, cool. but it it was, and it, it, it's it's a. I actually photographed a wedding there this year which was lovely to go back. Oh, first that's time cool. First time I'd been to a wedding there since my own wedding. Um, yes. But the vicar was lovely, but she was restrictive. And it was a shame because it's such a gorgeous church. She did allow me to go to the back, but, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're rules. They're, as I said in a group yesterday, when people complain about vicars in churches, well, if the bride says, can you take your shoes off to go upstairs, then you do as you're told, don't you? So mm, to me, you. it's the same with, with vicars and registrars and, if they're the rules, they're the rules. That's 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 just how it is, and that's yeah. Part of it again. I feel the same way. I and, I, and I think I think that probably goes back again to the editorial side of things. That you turn up on jobs and they'd say, right, oh, you're from the press, you've got to stand over there. Well, if that's where uh, we've got to stand, that's where we've got to stand. If the yeah. picture doesn't, if the picture doesn't happen from there, well, c'est la vie. There's not yeah. a lot we can do about it. I feel um, the same way, definitely. Yeah. And with the when you photographed the wedding there um you know going back there photographing was it do they still have to pay 300 quid is it like three grand with like inflation no, yeah. <laughs> do you know no i don't think there's anything to pay anymore i don't <laughs> think they had to pay anything i don't know why it was i don't know whether it was because it was the diocese of chester which i think it's still under um yeah. i've no idea i've no idea what it was but we we questioned it and they was like no pictures during the ceremony it's off. It's, it, even though it's not their copyright there was a copyright release fee so we just yeah. basically politely said no 
<laughs> yeah, I don't blame it. It's funny as well, you were saying about not being like really religious as well. I, I'm not either, but my parents forced me to go to Sunday school. But the, I reckon, I know now, it was just because they could have the house empty on a Sunday morning. <laughs> it really is. I know it is. I know it is. Um, well, yeah. we, I mean, I, I, I say I'm not like, you know, I'm, my grandfather was a vicar. And so oh, wow. with my dad's, my we used to go to church every Sunday with my parents up until and we went to Sunday we went to Sunday school, they went to church, and then we came out of church and whatever. And then when we were about 13, 14, uh, my mum and dad said to us, You don't have to come to church anymore if you don't want to. Right. So I kind of thought, well, I've got to do two weeks, haven't I? Really? I can't just say, No, I'm great, <laughs> right. I'm not coming then. So yeah. I kind of did two more weeks and I thought, I'm missing out on Sunday morning football here. <laughs> so I said, actually, I'd rather go and play football. So, That's a different religion, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, do you realise you're not good enough to be professional at it, and then it becomes a, a, a way of getting drunk on a Saturday. <laughs> 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 when you're young, by the way, when you're young. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my I, I Sunday. School, it's funny talking about Sunday school, but my my little rebellion. My parents didn't let me have um, bubble gum, so I used to buy bubble gum on the on the morning <laughs> of Sunday school while I was waiting for the bus because I didn't want to go. But the one good thing about Sunday school, another apart from the bubble gum, is that we played um, we played religious blockbusters at Sunday. Wow. School. Yeah, it was like, what Jay is the son of God? That kind of thing. No which, way. Yeah, we did. I know, that was <laughs> We had a proper Blockbusters board and everything. Did, do you remember wow. that? Blockbusters. What, do I remember Blockbusters? God, yes. Yeah. It's, look, that and Bullseye. That was, oh, that yeah, was Bullseye year. on a Sunday, after, Sunday early evening or something, wasn't it? This, oh. this, we need, this is definitely a target audience, this podcast, <laughs> We could be, we could be, we could be blocking out half of your subscribers here talking about <laughs> oh, old that's... television and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, bullseye, gosh. Doctor Who. I used to have. I used to. My dad used to play rugby for Southport Rugby Club. Oh, and cool. We used to come. We used to come back from the rugby club, and we'd have Jim will fix it. Let's not go down oh, yeah. that road now. Yeah. But we had <laughs> Jim will fix it, and then Doctor Who. And we, we used to have. I used to have a glass of milk and a banana sandwich watching Doctor Who. Nice, nice. <laughs> Whoever eats banana sandwiches. Oh, no, I love banana sandwiches. Really? I used to, yeah, I used to have Excellent. them for breakfast all the time when I was like 14, 15. I love banana sandwiches. Yeah, Not good for years. That and a crisp, yeah. that and a crisp sandwich. Oh, crisp, crisp sandwich. <laughs> there you go. So what flavour, what flavour crisp do you put on your crisp butty? Cheese and onion. No. We're already salted. I, see, I, I ready salted is a big winner for me because it's kind of, Gives a little bit of it. Does it have any flavour? I don't know, but it does work with a bit of butter on. Magic. Yeah, it is good. I've not had one in ages. Actually, I'm not there had you a go. That's your lunch sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> that's made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> go and get it done. Get it on. <laughs> um, that's funny. You know, again, going back to your um, the three hundred pound thing that I was asking, and I said, was it Westminster Abbey? Um, because you have actually photographed a wedding at Westminster Abbey, though, haven't you? So you were one of the photographers who photographed the royal wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, weren't you? Very lucky. That's yeah. proper. What was that Very experience lucky. like, man? Tell us about that. That's awesome. Oh, it was. It was. Uh, you know, funnily enough, I had to do. Uh, I got contacted by Channel Five this year. Could I do a piece for them for about what it's like 10 years on? Um, and we did it via Zoom in a hotel room. So I was working away at the time. And thankfully, they didn't air it, but I absolutely sobbed my eyes out. Oh, really? Wow. Honestly. And, it, and it, thankfully, as I say, it was right at the end of the interview. So they, they binned it. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. It, and I hate using the word amazing because everyone seems to use it, but it just. I contacted my picture editor, a guy called Martin Keane at the Press Association. Um, and I said to him, I don't want to do a street party in Stockport to, to commemorate the royal wedding. Mm. So even if I'm stood on a street corner in London, you know, I'd like to be down there. I'd like to be part of it somehow. So he was like, OK, we'll bear you. And that's probably, what, 12 months before the wedding. Um mm. And then I got an email from him probably a couple of months beforehand, I think, saying, yeah, we're going to bring you down. I'm going to have you inside Westminster Abbey. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. So then about, I think it was probably a week before we got the, he sent me the plans and he told me I was in the organ loft. Now that means nothing to me, or it meant nothing to me. Um, so I rang my dad. <laughs> I'm like, dad. I'm inside Westminster, and I mean, where's the organ loft? He's like, you're in the organ loft, 
or you're near it. I said, no, I'm in it. I'm going to be amongst all these musical instruments. <laughs> and he basically said, well, you, you are roughly less than 100 metres from the altar. Wow. Uh, which, again, I can't even tell you the distance. I just don't know. But I remember going in there at whatever it was, 7.30 in the morning, and thinking, blimey, this is closer than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Um, way less than 100 metres. And it was... It, it, there are very few jobs through the work I've done that probably, hopefully, touch wood, uh, one day I can tell my grandchildren about, and that's one of them. Yeah, um, it's mega. It was, it was, it was mega. It was just, and even now when I when I look back on it and I just think it's, <laughs> you won't be surprised that it's on my banner at wedding fairs. Yeah, <laughs> royal wedding it, photographer. It's it's funny. I have people saying to me, "Why have you got that on your banner?" And it's like you didn't you didn't take them, did you? Oh, it's really? Like, they yeah. say that. Yeah. They think I, I, one person said, "Did you nick them off Google?" <laughs> uh, I'm like, no, I didn't. And so, they well, nicked it then, off me, probably everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then it's also you know yeah, I kind of have to say that well, they also didn't book me directly through a wedding fair. Do you know mm. what I mean? I think it's, <laughs> yeah. it didn't happen quite like that. They had no idea I was there. Um, yeah nor should they um Man. but it and was so it were, was just phenomenal. phenomenal and you were photographing the whole ceremony so her arrival everything it was a long ceremony i didn't watch it i think i don't know did i watch it, it no, i watched bits i think yeah it wasn't do you know what daft as it sounds and this this sounds ridiculous to say it now <laughs> but i went down the day before i stayed overnight at the press association it's basically pa for sure at pa's offices right um and I got up the next morning, nervous as hell, got there. And I remember standing outside. We had to stand outside Westminster Abbey. I think it was about half past five to meet the, the logistical people. In the morning? Yeah, half past oh. five in the morning. And I remember standing there thinking, God, this would be much nicer watching this at home. <laughs> yeah. You know, glass of champagne with the missus, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you kind of get taken in and then you just go into sort of work mode and you think, right, here we are. This is it now. Um, but I actually had, as um they started playing the music and uh i think william and harry had arrived so they were stood at the front of the altar i was i had the organ to my left and i was surrounded by all the instruments all the, the brass the wind anything whatever you know and then there's me there days before mirrorless let's bear in mind right yeah so i start Clacking taking away some, exactly i start <laughs> taking some pictures and if he's the organ master if that's his right title then it was him he came up to me and said, your camera's too loud. <laughs> and I went, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. So then I actually started to become more selective about what I was doing while I was up there because I just thought, I well, I don't think they could have kicked me out because it was what's called a pool position. So there was literally me in that position and those pictures were given by the press association to everyone else who was involved in the, in the media pool. Um, yeah, okay. So I don't think they could have kicked me out, but I did think this is not somewhere I want to get kicked out from because of the responsibility that's on it. Yeah. Um, so I did become yeah. a little bit, you know, it, it wasn't a machine gun wedding, put it that way. Um, mm. yeah, but it was, sure. it, it was, it was, I don't know how long it lasted. Was it an hour? It must have been an hour. It must have been something like that. Yeah. Man, I know, so cool. I know. Seeing the, the queen was there, wasn't she? She must have been there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah all of them yeah. were. Yeah yeah. 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 It was great. But I mean, I know when they drove off, if you remember at night time, they, they disappeared for a bit and they drove off in like a, a bond car or something didn't they all oh, right um and i was back home in stockport on my already yeah third bottle of red wine I think. <laughs> do you know i think it's so cool because I, I remember i remember i did watch bits of it and my wife actually got back in into her wedding dress to watch it so she was in oh, so wow. i was there with my wife in her wedding dress but now i'm speaking to someone who's actually in westminster abbey photographing <laughs> it it's such a small world that's so it's so cool man um i was gonna ask two more things about that that came to mind was it like is it like mega security when you, you know, did they like body search you and everything going in there? Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I, if I'm deadly honest, I'll, I'm, I'll, I would be saying, if I could tell you that I remembered every last bit, then honestly, I'd be lying. I think, I'm pretty sure we would have been. We would have, as I say, we'd, been, we'd have met up at half past five. We'd have gone. All the security checks are done before you even get there. Well, they were back then, whether it's changed even more now. Right. Um, that would be done during the build up to um to the actual day itself with security services but from my point of view i turn up with 
the bags and the cameras that I'm using and they will most likely have gone through a scanner and then, you know, you're taken to your position and told that's where you've got to stay until someone comes to get you. Uh, okay, um, right, yeah. So, yeah, so th- th- it will have been pretty high security. I can only imagine. I know you mentioned you were nervous. I can only imagine. You know, I get nervous for just every wedding and uh, <laughs> every week in week. I cannot imagine the nerves of doing what you did there. That's proper. I think it's, I think you just, I, I remember, I have several overriding memories of different parts of, of the ceremony. I remember the sound of when Kate Middleton comes, if ever you watch it back, if you're that bored, <laughs> on YouTube, she walks all the way down the aisle through all these trees and I can't see a thing. The first time I can see her is as she walks beneath the organ loft into the choir stalls. That's right. the first time I get eyes on any of any of the bridal section. And the music was stunning because it just went all the way up. I describe it as going all the way up and coming, dumping down on my shoulders. Yeah, that's cool. It was phenomenal. And I, again, I, I am quite an emotional person. I had tears rolling down my cheeks, which oh. stupidly I mentioned to my fellow press photographers when I got back to a football wire room. And even now I get mercifully rinsed for it because <laughs> they just thought it was hilarious. But I did. It was just, and, and, and again, it, it's one of those, I'll never, ever forget it. I'll never forget it. It was brilliant. Man, amazing. I mean, you're in a totally unique position for, yeah, for it as well. Unique. Yeah. That's a, oh, man. That's an awesome special. story. It's very special to me. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, uh, sorry. I've just used the word amazing. I know you said you didn't like it. That <laughs> is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, it I, is. It is. Something I was going to ask because it just came to mind during that as well, though. Because I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't know about press photography and how it works. But I'm just wondering, you know, when you take the photos and you send them off to the the press or, or wherever it works a lot of the time when they use then do, do, you know do you you don't get like a personal credit do you and i just wondered does that does that ever bother you you know when you see your your images being used to represent any news coverage or sports coverage and and i i think a lot of the time you don't see a personal credit does that ever kind of bother you no i mean there's different there's different ways of doing it i mean you know i was working with the press association so every single picture i took in the my time with them, the seven years that I was with them, um, they retained the copyright on. Right. So, okay. you know, the, uh, if, if they if they sell a picture to a, an ad company or a, on a billboard or whatever, I, you know, that's life. I don't get that. Mm. But, you, but you don't get any, you know, financial reimbursement from it. But you know that. You know what you're signing up to. So right, okay. you're not in a position to complain. Even now when we, when they're still photograph football matches, the people I do it for, um, they pay you what's called a shift fee. Um, so you have that shift fee, and then you send them the pictures, and they're their pictures. They're not mine. Right, okay. They're not mine to sell. There are things in place like Premier League agreements and things like that, and you aren't allowed to sell them for people to print onto T-shirts. I was going to say, so you couldn't do it on the slide. Like you could just send them like a hundred photos and then keep like 400 for yourself and like just sell I them. Just, I, yeah. I, keep, I keep them all in case they come back and say, have you got anything extra from that match? Right, um, okay. And I do think it's nice to have an archive for, for one day to, you know, to show people or to put on my website or whatever. But I don't, I would never risk selling pictures on the slide yeah because it, it, as soon as that rug gets pulled underneath you you're never doing anything for anyone else again yeah no, that's true um, it? it's just not worth it um but it allows you to you know it allows you to actually have some kind of not that i class myself as business minded but it gives me an idea each month of i've got this in i've got that in and i've got a wedding yeah or i've got this in and that in or whatever and i know that i can you know financially i can budget for the month a lot of photographers a lot some photographers go to the football send the pictures to the papers. If something gets used, they get paid. If nothing gets used, they don't get paid. Uh, right, yeah. That's, that's that's real sports photography to me. That's that's the guys that are really working bloody hard trying to make it all work because it's, right. not, it's not easy. Uh, I guess so. Well, you're working hard, man, as well. You're working hard. Yeah, yeah oh, I, think, I think we all work hard, but the, mm. you know, the guys that, that run their own sports press agencies, if you like, they are really, really, because the the... the you know what you what you might have got for a picture in a magazine or a newspaper ten years ago is nowhere like what it is today. It's mm, massively okay. slashed. So they are constantly, constantly, constantly trying to create income, um, and that's that's got to be pretty tough. That must be, tough. Uh, which we all are. Do you know what I mean? We all mm. are. So, but but when you're in an industry like 
the editorial one, which has seen budgets cut left, right, and centre, and no, you know, ten quid for a picture used on the Mail Online or whatever it is these days, it's not really. Right. It's not. It's not the mega books that people often think it is. Right. Okay. Uh, funny how things have gone. Um, Real world. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dude. Let let's let's change tack. Let's change tack. Um. So I, I don't know if you've. I know you've listened to a few episodes, but I don't know if you ever heard um, ones that I've done on a Netflix little synopsis game, which I quite I've like. Been, I've been dreading this bit, but, <laughs> yeah, but I like a challenge. <laughs> oh, good. Cool. Okay. So you know what's coming if anyone's listening for the first time. So I'm just gonna ask Dave a few um, Netflix or, or other streaming services uh, or just movie synopses in general or series and, and going to see if we can get the title and uh, yeah, can play have, along can I have the ones? Can I have the ones that were as easy as you gave to Stephen Rooney? Were they easy ones to Rooney? Oh, I, I, I got put it this way, I got them. <laughs> so, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> People often say when they listen to other ones and they can get them all right, but then when it comes to their own, it's, like, it's funny. <laughs> this is what I'm dreading. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you ready, Dave, for your first one? Let's go. Let's okay, go. this is a movie. Okay, so an organised crime dynasty's ageing patriarch transfers control of his clandestine empire to his reluctant son. Oh, I don't even know if this is right, but I'm going to... Godfather, the Godfather. Yes, that's right. Yes, and boom, yes, nice one. Me. I don't care if I get them all wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I, I have watched it, but it didn't stick in my memory. So that makes me think, was it not as good as everyone says it is? I know, because it's know. supposed to be like one of the all-time best films ever, isn't it? I don't know. think it's ever as good, fellas, is my favourite film. Oh, I do like that. Mm. Oh. But I remember being put off when I watched it first time. I think I was too young. Is that, is that, very early on, isn't that like there's someone in the in the boots and then they open it up and then I like to attack him more or something. That's yes, good. it's about, yeah. halfway, about halfway oh, through. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. ooh, that's, that was just horrible, <laughs> horrible. But yeah, it was a good film. I watched it again uh, a few years ago. It's a good film. Okay, uh, one out of one so far, Dave. That's good. That's good. Let's go to your second one then. So this is a series, okay? Um, this sci-fi anthology series explores a twisted high-tech near future where humanity's greatest innovations and darkest instincts collide. That sounds rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> can, I, can, you t- can you read it again? Yeah. I'm not typing it in, by the way. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this sci-fi anthology series explores a twisted high-tech near future where humanity's greatest innovations and darkest instincts collide. Oh, it began, I'll give you a clue. Yeah, go on. It, it kind of began life on Channel 4 quite, quite a few years ago, and then Netflix have bought it for the last few years, I think. Um, absolutely no idea. No, cool. I'll say it's, it's Black Mirror. No. Oh, Sorry, you've never, oh, you never watched any Black Mirror. Oh, honestly, man, it's so good. Each episode is a totally different subject, but it's really, really good. It's really good. I'll, I'll write it down now. Black <laughs> there we go. Okay, <laughs> so that's not, it's not bad so far. One out of fifty percent so far. It's 50%. good. Dave. Can I can I retire? <laughs> <laughs> so your final one. Okay, and this is a movie. This is a bit more obscure. <laughs> Just to warn you. <laughs> you don't okay. Any <laughs> I know. <sorry. laughs> so okay. Um, after a coup d'état explodes in his homeland Victor Navorsky is stranded at Kennedy Airport where he's holding a passport that nobody recognises <laughs> <laughs> that's an obscure <laughs> oh god um, i give you a clue with the actor i give you a clue with the actor is Tom Hanks no oh, I like Tom Hanks as well no, I've never seen this one, actually. I love Tom Hanks, but I've never seen this one. So Toy I think, yeah. Story 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good film. That's a good film. That's a great film. Um, yeah, so he, has to, he lives in the airport, I think, in America, because he doesn't, you know, doesn't have an actual legal passport. Of what's uh, do you know, I bet, I've, I, bet I've, I bet I've seen it. Go on, tell me. It's uh, The Terminal. Oh, no, I haven't seen it. No, I haven't. I haven't either. But sorry, that was a hard one. Then. But... No, that's all right. You've given me two things there for my list to watch. Like <laughs> that's not bad, on. though, still, man. A third is good. You know, a lot of people are not good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, but, yeah, but a third out of three is shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not too bad. <laughs> uh, man, are you watching anything good at the moment? Do you watch most Netflix in general? Uh, on and off. We, kind of, we keep on hearing about this Squid Game thing. Oh, yeah. We've not we started watched... that yet. No, we watched as we quite often do on a Friday night, we watched Gogglebox. And oh, yes. like, yeah. it got a mention on there and we thought, 
this might be this is this year's Tiger King, I think, isn't it? Oh, that was where we are with it. And yeah, that was my best fancy dress ever. Tiger. Oh, King did you go as Tiger King? Did you? <laughs> we did it. We did an online fancy dress with some friends, so we dressed up as whatever their names were, and it was uh, yeah. I, I will happily say it was one of my best ever fancy dress outfits. <laughs> not that there's been many, but no, I'm not. I'm not watching a lot really. As I say, we've kind of we will have a look at that. I think and. I just don't think I get the time out, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, it's thing. always, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't watch it. During lockdown, we watched a few different things, but I'm not one that remembers films and box sets. Well, I could tell from that bit. quiz, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit rubbish at sort of, and by the way, The Godfather was a guest, so it was a <laughs> It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not very good at remembering plots of films and things that like you know we went to watch james bond the other day oh cool was it good and oh yeah go and see it if you've not seen it go and see it it's ace um but what was that it's nearly two weeks ago whatever and i could i can only remember pretty much the end the rest <laughs> of it is like did that happen in that film or the other one so uh, i kind of yeah i just I'm, I'm i'm not really sort of very good at remembering things like that <laughs> mm. Now, I've I've not seen many modern Bond films. I watched Casino Royale, and then the one after it, which I didn't like, with lots of oil in it or something. Is that Quantum of Solace? No, is it? I don't know what was the one after Casino Royale. I can't remember. Quantum of Solace. But I didn't like that one. So I've not seen like Skyfall or any other. Uh, I mean, what is weird, as I say, because my boys are eighteen and sixteen. Their only ever James Bond has been Daniel Craig. Uh, yeah, that is strange, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Whereas I think of my first one was probably. The tail end of Roger Moore, I think. Roger Moore, yeah, and then yeah, Sean Connery and yeah, all that all kind of those, stuff. All those, all that mob. Um, so yeah, there you go. Go and see Bond. If you're not seeing it, go and see it. Okay, good recommendation. Last <laughs> night, um, we finished last night. Actually, the the last episode of Friends. So we've been watching all ten seasons because we'd. I've heard this on an earlier podcast. Yeah, you have. Oh. You have more patience than me. <laughs> it was hardcore, man, doing it. Honestly, I have so many things I want to watch now that have been coming out in the recent months. But we've just been piling through Friends. So. I'm but this is this is because of your infatuation with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, that's funny. That is true. <laughs> I <I'd say. laughs> And honestly, I'm hovering over my next question to ask you, which is a question I've never asked anyone else. But it's my answer to this is Jennifer Aniston. So that's funny. That's really weird, actually. Did, did really you weird. have did you have the black and white poster of Jennifer Aniston on your wall? <laughs> I think I, I did have a Jennifer Aniston on my wall. I did, I did, I'm sure. Did you? She was, uh, yeah, I did. She, she was, I have this equal infatuation that you have with Jennifer. Oh, that's awesome. Because that yeah, honestly, yeah. the question I've got highlighted here now, which I was going to ask you next, was, as a kid or teenager growing up, did you ever have any celebrity crushes? So, Well, I would, I would have been uh, probably I would have been late, te- late teens, I suppose. Right, that still counts Jennifer, as a teenager. Yeah. Jennifer Aniston was, was one, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I used to I used to love Banana Armour. Oh wow, cool. I just thought all three of those the, the women in Banana Armour at the time were just like mesmerized. Belinda Carlisle had a bit of a crush on Belinda oh, Carlisle nice. as well. If you've nice. not heard of these people, kids, Spotify, <laughs> Spotify, your friend. <laughs> um <laughs> Banana yes, Rama, wow, yeah. that is going back a bit, isn't it? Banana Rama. Yeah, well, I can study on Al, not that far. <laughs> they've, made a, they've made a comeback. <laughs> I say, really. <laughs> Yeah, I think they have. Sure they have. Well, they've been on telly recently, so they must have done something. Whether there's all three of them still or just two of them, I'm not sure. But Yeah, I did. I, I had loads of crushes. Tiffany, do you remember her? Red oh, hair. She was stunning. I think, um, yeah. I think, uh, no, that's not her, is it? I think I'm alone. No, no that's it's not her. That's the one? That's her? It is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a one-hit wonder. But, but no, <laughs> again, and there would always have been music. I think I probably was more into music as a kid than I was films. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, there would if any sort of teenage crushes would have been. But I'm sure there was the odd girl in the year above me at school that I liked as well. Oh, that's cool. I love hearing about that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I had Jen Fanniston in my school books. I put like pictures in it, and Ulrika Johnson. I had a big thing for Ulrika well. Johnson. Yeah, she used to do the weather. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah, and then she presented Gladiators. I went to the NEC or the NIA. I can't remember. And saw her in the flesh. She was miles away because I was seated right at the back. But it was still cool. See that? Yeah. Do you remember Gladiators on Saturday? I do. Yeah. With with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jet, Jet was oh Jet was, Jet was the gorgeous, female, yes, the gorgeous. Female oh, I forgot gladiator. about Jet. Yeah, there were, who were the fellows? There was Wolf. Wasn't oh there? yes, yeah, Hunter, oh. Hunter, Shadow, Shadow, yeah. Yeah, it good was times. The nineties, the nineties were brilliant. <laughs> they were good times, weren't they? So bad oh. they were good. 
that's so funny. <laughs> um, but let, let's let's get back to your photography. I really enjoyed that little uh, little interlude. That was really fun. Um, so yeah, as well as your news coverage as a press photographer, you, you've also covered loads of major sporting events all over the world. So yeah, I just wondered what's been some of your most favourite to shoot. Ooh. Um. <laughs> What the was Olympics in like? Oh, Olymp- sorry, sorry, yeah. No, 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 no. The Olympics in London, that was oh, great, man. just because Ooh. it was... Which events? I did all of them. We did, did you? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you all of them. I probably didn't do all of them. That's a massive <laughs> lie. I did, <laughs> yeah. I, I did a lot of things, but again, that was with press associations, so I was helped. I was, one of my roles with a guy called John Giles was to try and orchestrate our team for the athletics events so in the stadium and things like that so there was a lot of trying to make sure we had people in good positions positions we were allowed to have people in in field track side head on high up all these different positions so that was that was cool that was great fun to do um what else wherever i've done a champions league final i've done oh, really yeah year. where was that and, it was the one in Cardiff with Juventus and Real Madrid. It wasn't that long ago, actually, within okay. the last six or seven years. Um, I've done a couple of UEFA Cup finals, nice. FA, Cup, FA Cup finals. Do you have, like, super um, long lenses for the football stuff? Uh, the longest one I use is a 400-2.8. Right, um, okay. Wow, that's pretty big. Use, I've yet to use it in a wedding. <laughs> um, <laughs> That'd be cool to bring along. <laughs> there, might yeah. a, <laughs> there might be a time for that. You never know. If I get the... the the worst vicar ever that sends you to the car park. You might need. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, and what was it like? I, I think I read that you did um, some. Bo- you did boxing in in Vegas, weren't you? Ricky Hatton fights, was it? I did. Yeah, two Ricky Hatton fights in Las Vegas. Which what again, was that like? Are you near? Are you kind of near ringside for that? Or are you further away? Or what? no, I was uh, again massive. I, I, I can't tell you how privileged I feel I am to to have done these things. And at the time, you do you take them for granted. It's not until you have conversations with with yourself and, and other people that you think bloody hell yes. um yeah i was you're on the apron you are literally your elbows are on the canvas wow um, that's and you're amazing. shooting you're shooting through the ropes oh so that what's was, that like oh, though you must literally it must ace. be brutal to be so close though to it as well it must be brutal yeah I mean, it's one of my favorite sports not just you know just as a not just as a photographer but as a as a sport mm. i love it um i was up on sunday morning watching fury world the three so. yes did you yeah, watch it? Was, oh, it was it, well. I was, I did uh, a show for Matchroom uh, in Liverpool on Saturday night. So, and I got back from that at half past one. So <laughs> I went to bed, set the alarm for four. Yeah. Got up, got up to watch Purely Wilder. Went back to bed at six, <laughs> and got up at quarter past seven to go to a wedding fair. Oh man, that so, is hardcore. That is hardcore. <laughs> was like, that was a brutal <laughs> Sunday. But yeah, it's that's. That is one of the best fights I've ever seen. I it was have, amazing, wasn't it? I would have loved, I would have loved to have been ringside for that. But it's just, yeah, what a fight! But again, wow. it, you know, whenever you're ringside for any fight, it's. Well, I've it's never really, been. I've never been to any. I can only imagine it must be such an experience. That must be such. They an are. They're, 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 they're good events to go to. Um, I saw on your website you, you've done like a portrait of Fury as well. And so you obviously you met him, haven't you? What's he like? Yeah, he he's sound. He, I, I don't. Sometimes I don't think he does himself any favors with some of the things he comes out with. But he was he was lovely. We did. It was for um, was a boxing reporter, boxing journalist called Gareth A. Davis, and it was when Tyson had just beaten uh, Vladimir Klitschko. Oh yeah. And we went to the Midland Hotel in Morecambe, um, which is close to where he lives, and he was being presented with the Ring magazine belt, uh-huh. which is a prodigious prodigious belt in boxing um so we there were some rocks out the back on the sea and i said can we go over there and do something with you on there and we walked out there and the the, <laughs> the reporter gareth forgot the belt <laughs> okay so tyson fury and i are stood on these rocks just chatting stuff and nonsense and i i remember saying to him what do you do now now you've won the world title what do you do and he said i don't know i might pack it all in uh. And subsequently from that, in the several months after, when, when you started to get reports of him spiralling out of control, putting on loads of weight, going up to whatever it was, crazy, mm. 30, nearly 30 stone, I think he was. Um, and I thought, wow, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he genuinely meant that. And he said, yeah, I might just pack it all in. Well, he, did, yeah. he obviously felt that at the time. Yeah. So, he's, you know, he, he's, 
he, he's he's a as as all boxers are. I don't know there are, there are very few that are not decent people to be around. Um, mm. And the same with you know again lucky the same with other sportsmen. But they're, they're all just people. Again, it goes back to what we said in the beginning that people are people, and you can't get on with all everyone. Um, mm. You've got to accept that. You can at least try. Yeah. Oh my, that's most, so cool. Most people, most people yeah. It's, it's, it's so cool though. Yeah. It's so surreal. It's such a, a small world as well. It's just so weird. I was obviously, as I say, I was watching the Fury fight the other day. And then last night I just showed um, only my wife. It's a little 20 minute documentary of how he um, got up from that 12th round knockdown in the first world of fight. And, and now I'm talking to someone who's actually photographed it and, and spoke to him. It's so weird. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good sport to be around. Definitely. dude this has been so fun talking to you but i have got I, it's been like an hour even with, uh, with a little technical break with my fault was people <laughs> well, actually they wouldn't have known unless i've just said it anyway hopefully but yeah anyway i, I if anyone knows there's uh, if everyone sense a bit odd clip uh, in this episode i'll try and put it together seamlessly but if anyone knows that it's not seamless it's because i plugged my laptop into uh, the extension but then forgot to plug the extension into the wall so i lost power <laughs> but yes yeah, so i've got time Oh, God. I, I, I wasn't going to throw you under the bus on that either, Alan, but fair play <laughs> to you for your admission on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a fool, man. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Um, but, yeah, so I've got time for one more question, man. I want to ask you about one of your repertoire awards, which I think you won in the, I think in the most recent collection, I think. It was one that was announced uh, last week or so. Um, yeah, so I think it's one where I think it's a flower girl, I think, is it? That's fallen over and then the, and the, and the bride's helping her up and everyone's laughing all around. It's such a fab capture. Yeah, can you tell us uh, more about that shot yeah so that was that was a wedding from um it was late 2019 i think and it was it was it was they'd gone off to register um and this little flower girl was was on the the stage if you like in the church and she kind of came on and and started doing little little sort of spinny things like girls do in in little dresses um which was okay it kind of you know, it made a half a picture. Mm. Um, and her mum is actually from from the angle where the picture is taken. But she's lying on the floor. The bride is on the right. And yeah. her, the, the little girl's mum is the lady who's running up from the pew. Um, and she just sort of was just spinning. And then she sat down and just did a backward roll. But then, but then got stuck. She couldn't <laughs> then kind of get herself back forward or decided not to move i don't know which it was but obviously legs are everywhere dresses everywhere knickers are on show everyone's <laughs> gasping and laughing and people just came running from all that all angles i think even the vicar's laughing on it as yeah well. he is that's what's so yeah. cool about it i think all those yeah. reactions you got and, there's, really and cool. then there's the bride's is it the bride no it's the groom's mum is over on the right it was obviously like a great great grandma or something and she's she's she, she's got a stern face but it's not that she was annoyed with it all she just probably didn't quite know what was going on um but it is it's lovely and and again it's it's one of those pictures that you kind of hope that you've not knocked out of focus or something when mm. you when you're taking it and you look back at the camera and, yeah did you remember did you uh, chimp like straight after that or something oh, I'm, a, I'm a bugger for chimping oh I'm yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah always always and i put it i think at times if it's something like that and you think right they've gone you know not straight away. They'll go and take the little one back and sit down. And um, yeah, I'll have had a sneaky little look. But yeah. but do you know? I always look for less so now. Now I'm using mirrorless cameras. Back then, I used to look because I think, oh, tell me it's not. In, tell me it's in focus. Yeah. Tell me it's in. Please don't be out of focus. Because again, going back to the sport, you'd, you'd have a goal from a football match, and you'd think I've got it, and you'd have maybe six frames on it, ten frames on it. And you might have one that's in focus, and the one that you really want isn't out of focus. And it used to have, sorry, it isn't in focus, the one yeah. that you really wanted to be the picture. And it used to become so frustrating. You didn't get your gear sorted out, and it still wouldn't be right, and everything else. So that was the one thing going into weddings that I was massively, massively nervous about the kit not letting me down, which right. sounds ridiculous, putting that much, um, you know, thinking that you rely on your kit that much, but I guess we do. We do, yeah. It's the bread and butter, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. So it and so things like that. It's like great. That's in focus. Perfect. But and it's just the big thing for me is now that if I shoot something at one four or one eight, then I know nine times out of ten it's going to be 
There's going to be effects. more than there's going to be more than one frame that's sharp. Whereas mm. back then, if you did anything at one point four, one point eight on even my own on my one DXs, my Canon one DXs, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have if you had ten frames, you wouldn't have eight of them sharp. Yeah, uh, right. Okay. Two. Right. Um, so it's made a big, big difference for me from that point of view. Oh, that's cool. What mirrorless are you using now? What are you using? Um, I went from, I made the jump. I went to Sony. I did. Okay. Um, and me. But, but I did it, yeah, I did it a month before lockdown, which was probably oh, not right. the best business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's spend thousands of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare. I kind of, I spoke to Canon. Canon had a day at Wex up in Manchester and I spoke to them. And it's one of the people I spoke to said, look, brutally honest, there's nothing mirrorless on the horizon. Oh, and I'm right. like, well, do you know, I've got, however many it was, eight, nine weddings this year, I'm going to make the move because I want things like being able to shoot silently. And yeah. that was the main thing. Yeah. Um, so so I did a trading and did all these things and got everything sorted out and then it spent three months under the stairs. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah. But but yeah, but now you know, I wouldn't, you know, and now Canon are obviously catching up. They're bringing stuff out. And I think they're doing yeah. great things as well, But which always happens with, with Canon, with any form of yeah um, any form of technology uh, isn't it as well really? yeah someone yeah. takes the lead someone catches up someone takes over someone yeah. catches up again and but you've just got to be happy with your system and what you use and i don't think any of them are perfect by any no, that's, i don't that's, think that's, there's you'll always find fault in something or other um but yeah it's, it, would i go back absolutely not and i wouldn't no, go back to film <laughs> no <laughs> gosh, wouldn't yeah. go back to film. my god no thanks <laughs> oh <laughs> man Dave, oh, it's just been it's just been so fun talking to you, and it's it's so cool. Like, we've never spoken, never had any messages or anything, but it just felt like it just felt like I've known you. Oh, it's so, so weird, <laughs> it's so weird. Mm. You're a lovely dude. It's been really lovely talking to you. Um, thank you for sharing everything. It's been so interesting. All these stories there. It's just been really, really fun. I look forward to be able to meeting you in the flesh in November at nine. Well, dots. It will be good. Yeah, and, and again, thanks for having me on. It's always, um, I think I said to you on a message yesterday. It, it, it's I don't I don't like I don't like to fly my flag very much. Um so something okay. like this can always feel a little bit <laughs> um no, so yeah, I hope it's not sounded too too oh, not at all. No, not at all, page. dude. Um, You're like one of the most down to earth people I've spoken to. <laughs> so, no, not at all. Of course, man. Of course. Well keep everyone who's listening, just I'm sure we'll all be right in the end. Just keep plowing on and plodding on and, and we will get there. That's say. true. Get to Christmas, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, if we if we survive if we survive the gathering, mate, that's that's one more thing. That's true. Four yeah. days of that, it'll be great. I'm looking oh, forward. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm really looking forward to it, dude. Honestly, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, anyone listening now whilst exercising or doing the podcast? Oh, one thing I've bought, this is on a little uh, <laughs> random tangent, but I've bought, and it sounds really sad actually, but it's really good. I've bought this little under desk cycle so I can be like cycling whilst working on my laptop. I know, <laughs> but it's really good. I, can, I do it while I'm, I'm also a bit of a gamer on my laptop PC and I can be gaming and cycling, like exercise. It's really good. So you'll have legs like Chris Hawk <laughs> and like arm, arms like a, an Alan Key. <laughs> you just have me like completely out of proportion. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. But I really recommend it. It's really good. It's really good. Because I like walking my dog as aerobic exercise, but I'm a bit of a fair weather walker. So if it's raining and stuff, I don't go out. So I'd, I find ha- I'd, have, to, I'd have to tell people, though, like if I was talking to him and I was doing it, because all of a sudden, if they, if they can't see you and you're suddenly oh, like, yeah, out of breath, <laughs> that yeah. might not be a booking. <laughs> no, I've, and I've spared it for you today. I've not done it whilst uh, talking to you on the podcast. I wouldn't, I that, wouldn't have mind. I don't even why. Oh yeah, I mentioned it because if you're listening to podcasts while doing exercise, that's why I get to it. But yeah, if you are listening now, so obviously you are. It's such a stupid thing that I say this if you're listening because they it's so stupid. But I still say it. But anyway, if you are listening, um, head to this reportage.com. Um, I'll have a link to Dave's website. I'll show that reportage award that he spoke about then as well. And yeah, man, really looking forward to meeting you um, in November. Look forward to it, mate. Thanks again for having me on. It's been great. Thank you, dude. Bye bye. Cheers, Alan. Take care, mate. Bye bye. You've been listening to the 88th episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Dave was just lovely to chat to. Hope you enjoyed it. Head to thisreportage.com for a link to his website and to see the specific reportage award he talked about too. We have lots more episodes of the podcast available where we speak to family and wedding photographers from all over the world, delving to our back catalogue to hear from the likes of Adam Johnson, Stephen Hairshaft, Ralu Chase, 
Ninka Kudyk, Valter and Tunas, Dominique and Liam Shaw of York Place Studios, Alex Kuss, Jill Streeflands, Sitlali Rico, The Framers, and many, many more. If you're not yet a member of this reportage or this reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, including our upcoming Christmas party in December, which is just for members, totally free to attend with a free drink if you can come early and you can bring a guest along too. Exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more too. Submissions are open now for our final award collections of 2021. The deadline is the same for both our wedding site and our family site. Submit by 2359 GMT on the 23rd of November 2021. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm-hmm.